Realty Group. Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax Results and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. We talked last week about what you needed to know if you're going to sell your house. So... I think it's obvious what we're going to talk about this week. <laughs> what, uh, right. what you need to know if you're buying a home. You know what, Andy? I think um, pretty soon you're going to know so much about real estate that I'm going to probably yeah. have to hire you on to teach these community ed classes with me. I'll go get my license. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I, from a buyer's perspective, is there any magical equation that puts you puts you where you want to be in the right home or is it it's it's got to be a lot more complex than just oh well there's that you know there's three things to look at there's a lot of things to consider and you know what we'll do before we go out looking at a house is we kind of well even before we set up appointments to see houses we talk about things like what's the most important to you you know for every buyer it's something different for a family with young children it might be proximity to the schools for a family um, that's recently retired, it might be for a neighborhood that's quiet and doesn't have kids running up and down the street. I mean, everybody has something different that's important to them. So I think it's really important to figure out what your wants are, what your needs are, and start from there. So do some reflection yourself. Definitely. And I'll help guide you through that. I mean, we'll talk about... Now think about where you live now and what are your favorite parts about that and what are the things that are least favorite so then we can make changes, you know? Okay. Make sense? what you're talking to me about is location. Location is super important um, and it's going to be, it's not like, oh, this is the prime location for every single buyer, thank God, because otherwise everybody would want to live in the same neighborhood. And, you know, some people, uh, some buyers I worked with last weekend said it's really, really important to us to not see neighbors when we're in our yard there can be neighbors in the neighborhood but we don't want to see them so in other words we want a couple of acres and the reason was not because they were antisocial they were very very nice people but they were people that um really were in touch with nature they like quiet they weren't into watching television um they like to spend time out in the yard they like gardening they like to do back yard camp outs with their two young daughters so they just wanted to feel like they had their own little piece of private space sure but yet weren't really ready to buy a a farm or several acres you know so we were able to find them really nice house in northwest rochester on a couple of acres in a cul-de-sac so when they do want neighbors they're not very far away and as those little girls grow up they might appreciate that there's other little kids in the neighborhood to ride bikes around the cul-de-sac with and things like that but they were able to find now i was talking to another one of my clients and she said if you told me i had to buy a place with acreage i'd rent so you know it's something different for everybody so it's figuring out what location is important to you so location 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 yes but it doesn't mean that this is a good location and this is a bad location what location is right for you exactly and i suppose you have to be a little bit honest with yourself in order to answer that question exactly i mean i personally spent 17 years living right downtown rochester on second street i loved it i absolutely loved it some people say Oh my God, I could never live right downtown. And I would love to live back right downtown Rochester. I just, I like the walkability. I like being, you know, not there's a ton of action downtown, but I like being a part of what there is, you know. So, um, but other people would, it would just be really unappealing. Yeah. Oh, and also different stages of your life. Too. Yes, As you exactly. With kids and the proximity to schools. Mm-hmm. I know that's how we chose where our home is. He said, hey, this is perfect. We've got a school here, here, and here. We're in a perfect triangle. Yeah. But, um, okay, um, you get a general sense of what kind of living these folks want to have. What's the next thing I should be considering as a buyer before I get out there and actually start looking around? So um, I guess I ask people things like how important is like garage space is a garage someplace really if it's a guy it's yeah and is it someplace <laughs> you just park your car or do you spend saturday afternoons out there tinkering with your tv on 
So, you know, things, we just kind of go through a checklist. What's really important to you? And some things are absolute must-haves and other things are would like to have. And then we start to narrow down which houses are out there to see and we go from there. And price range and of course. all that. Of sure all of that. Absolutely. And I suppose some of the features that you're talking about are found in different locations. I, you know, that ties to the location part too, because to have that gigantic garage, if I'm the guy who likes working on my cars, I'm going to have to look. It's probably, probably not going to be in downtown Rochester. No. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. the places that have a smaller lot sizes and that sort of thing. Right. Exactly. So um, that's our you know, our research before we start looking. And then once you do start looking, it's really important to know that some things are easy to change, other things are not. So if you get into a house and you just absolutely hate the carpet, hate it, hate it, hate it, and you want a different color or you just want the carpet gone altogether and you want wood floor, I say, that's not that big of a deal. But if you hate the fact that you're two doors down from a business that operates 24-7, you don't have any control over that. Right. It could be the dream house, but... But that's where the you location... Know, the sour you right. Yeah. And so you, you have to feel it and know that this is a place that I can live. It's a big investment, right? This is a place that I can live and the things that I can't change are things that I like and I can accept. But if you say this house is perfect, except I really, really hate that we're across the street from whatever it is, we then don't buy that house. The things that you can change, um, in your experience, uh, what's the most common? Is it the color of the carpet? Um, wore out carpet or dirty carpet. Oh, yeah, people that's... don't like somebody else's kind of used stuff, right? Yeah. Appliances. Sometimes people say, oh, I hate these appliances. Okay, so that's a pretty easy fix. You can buy new appliances. You can paint walls. You can change flooring. Now, if it's, um, oh, I don't like that there's six separate rooms. I really want an open concept. Well, when people start talking about knocking out this wall and knocking out that wall and, yeah. you know, rerouting where the vent work comes, it's, it's a much bigger deal. So, and I think sometimes people don't really have a clue how big of an undertaking they're talking about or the price tag. Oh, yeah. So that's where, you know, that's the job of us realtors, you know, come in. We help guide people, keep them on track and say, now remember, you told me that it was really, really important that you had a main floor bedroom and we are now looking at a house where all the bedrooms are upstairs. So let's kind of regroup and come back. And yeah, well, we could eventually put in an elevator. Well, all right. So you could, but that's going to be a huge expense yeah, and there has to be a appropriate space for it. So, I mean, um, just keeping it real, keeping expectations realistic, and finding, you know, the things that you're looking for in the house. I keep gravitating back to the location, Robin, and how to gauge what location is right for this seller or, you know, just myself personally and, and how... As a buyer, how how would I know? I mean, it's especially what, what hard. I watch for? Yeah, it's especially hard for um, people who are coming to Rochester from another place and yeah. they don't know the city at all. You know, if you've grown up here, you kind of know where you shop, you kind of know where you go to eat, yeah. so you kind of know which quadrant of town you live in per se. You know, as far as where you do your business, so you know what's going to be convenient for you, right? But somebody who's coming in from out of town knows nothing except for typically where their job is going to be. The good news is no matter where you buy in Rochester, you can probably get to where you work in Rochester <laughs> yes. in 20 minutes or less. And many people are like, okay, I'm used to driving five miles and it takes me 50 minutes or, you know, something like that. And so, we only have that really crowded period that lasts maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. And it's really not that crowded, <laughs> just depending on who you ask. But, but you know, I mean, we have, we are pretty spoiled here as far as commute time. So typically people don't have to base where they buy their house on how quickly they can get to work. You know, I mean, there is this thing where people who are on call have to be within, you know, 30 minutes or 15 minutes or and whatever you, it you is. 10 miles out of town and still be that. Yeah. So, um, exactly. So it, it doesn't put a huge constraint on, on typically where people buy. So then it comes down to things like, would you like close neighbors? Do you want, you know, neighbors 
but not too close? Do you want no neighbors at all? Okay. Um, are you looking for a neighborhood that might be full of like aged people? You know, if you sure. want to live in a neighborhood that's plump full of kids. One thing I do tell people, let's say you and I are out looking at a house and it's a Saturday morning. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of activity outside. And so you see now what it's going to look like on a Saturday morning. But now you might want to see what does it look like on a Tuesday afternoon or what does it look like on a weekday evening. So I do recommend that people kind of drive through that neighborhood or drive past that house at different times of the day and just get a feel for what life is like there. Yeah. I think That's it helps. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Think about it because I know that uh, especially... If- you're near a um, athletic complex mm-hmm. where youth baseball is played. Yeah, you can have some <laughs> traffic and some there cars. Be some parking and, issues. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I was out looking at houses last weekend, and we were up by the soccer fields over in Northwest, and I felt so bad for those people because they were parked mile away from the soccer field and it was raining. Oh goodness. And um then I saw people kinda make shift some parking spots and sure enough there was a police officer giving them tickets. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. I remember so, those days. Yeah. So for people who have kids that are involved um in sports, sometimes they think it's worth living close. You know, like I actually had a client recently who lived over on the southwest side of town and had daughters very very involved in the gymnastics um building that was or company that was over in north northeast and so they literally said we want to move northeast because we spend so much time driving back and forth driving back and forth so it's like whatever kind of your life looks like has a lot to do with the location of where you want to live all right we've been talking about buying a home things to think about things to be aware of as you consider buying a home. And we're talking with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results, and we'll continue along these lines right after this break on Newstock 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. All right, we have goat yoga lattes coming up in the yoga room. Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. This morning we've been talking about buying a home, what to be prepared for when buying a home, how to... uh, yeah, how to start the process, how to get into the process. And we spent a lot of time talking about choosing, I guess, the right location to find that dream home. And now maybe we better move on to what kind of home. <laughs> Easy on the dream home. Very few people really buy their, yeah. really buy their dream home. I guess home. you're right. I bet the, the home that... The right gonna, home. The right, right. home. Yeah. You know, and the the truth is, you know, Andy, we talked briefly at the beginning today how you've lived in your same home for quite a long so it time. So my dream. Yeah. And it, it truly was exactly what you were looking for. But I think statistics prove now that the average home buyer will stay in their home seven years. Okay. So maybe they're going to leave the city in seven years. Maybe they're going to move to a bigger house. Sure. Maybe they're going to move to a smaller house or maybe they're just going to move to a different location. But I think when people are buying the house now, they're not thinking about it the way people used to. It's not like, is this a place where I can live for the next 40 years? You know, I think now it's like, is this house going to serve us well for the next five to 10? Okay. Okay. So if you're in that time when you have young children, this is the kind of house you might be looking at. If or even, yeah, this this neighborhood might be attractive. Again, it's right across the street from the elementary school. Um, there's a, a great big houses. park. There's lots of other little kids. And then when you get to be older and your kids have all gone away, they're in college. Well, maybe living with all the little kids at the park and running across the street isn't exactly what you're looking for. And I don't mean that facetiously. No. I just mean realistically, right? So I think as our lives change, so does what we think of as a dream house. Sure. Perfectly understandable. Is there a type of house that's better for a certain person than another person? I, I mean, obviously, if you're a person who has mobility problems, you're not going to buy a two-story colonial. I, right. But you I mean, get that. beyond that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that 
I spend a great deal of time talking about what's important to people. You know, how do you live your life? Let's talk about your lifestyle. Are you somebody that entertains a lot? Are you somebody that the whole family gathers in the kitchen the majority of the time? Are you somebody where every member of their family likes their peace and quiet and their um, space in their bedroom to read or write or, you know, whatever. So then maybe you want bigger bedrooms. Maybe that's more important. So I think once we understand what your lifestyle is, how you use your home, then we can help you find the house that's going to fit your needs. And I think that's important. So that's that discussion you have one-on-one with the customer, your client. That, And it's kind of an ongoing discussion. Um, so we'll get in the house and, and we'll find something and all of a sudden, um, maybe it's a first-time home buyer and they've just told me how important it is to have space to entertain because... Every Friday night, they have a big group of friends that gets together and does a um, gourmet cooking or something like that. And now they find a house and they love everything about it, but it has a galley kitchen. And they're like, well, I mean, we don't really care if we have a big kitchen. And then I say, remember, we talked and that was one of the most important things. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so sometimes we just have to keep them, um, you know. When we were in real estate school, there was a um, saying that a lot of the teachers would say, and I always hated it, and I still hate it, and they would say, li- buyers are liars, and I think what they really were getting at is they'll tell you one thing and do another, like, I absolutely, positively want a big, flat backyard where I can fence it or it's already fenced, and then they'll end up buying a house that's stuck in a hillside because they love the house. So I feel like it's not because they were lying. I feel like it's either because they didn't really know know what they wanted or maybe they ended up buying what they didn't want. Maybe they did know what they wanted and ended up getting sidetracked and buying what they didn't want. So I really try to make it a priority to keep, that from happening. I try to keep reminding people about our initial conversation and the things that were important to them and are they still the same things and that usually brings people kind of back. Okay, that initial conversation. Right now we're talking about this and say somebody is going to give you a ring and make an appointment with you. What kind of things can they be thinking about? I mean, to be honest with themselves that can help them provide the answers that will help you Help sure. Them. I think just how do I live? I mean, do I spend two hours a day in a quiet space in my home enjoying a book? Do I... Or do I wish I could? Or do I wish I could? <laughs> or do I like to play the piano when I have company and um, and they can all enjoy it? Because if that's the case, all of a sudden you find a house that's almost perfect, but there's no place for the piano. That's really a bigger thing than you think, you know, because if you just told me how important that is... I don't think it just became unimportant. Yeah, because of some other feature of the Right, home. because you love the backsplash or the new granite countertop in the kitchen. So the whole layout of the home becomes extremely important no, as think, far as that individual is concerned. And How many know, bedrooms, I suppose? Exactly. And there's no perfect floor plan that's perfect for every single person. One floor plan that fits a family, you know, oftentimes I hear when a family has a couple of young children is we really want three bedrooms on the same level or we really want four bedrooms on the same level. When they're teenagers? Yeah, Yeah, when they're teenagers. (laughs) Is there a room in the basement for that child? (laughs) No, so right, exactly. So different phases of life again. All right, we have to take a really quick break. We're talking about buying a home being ready to buy a home, the things you should be prepared to think about as you get into the marketplace with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. We'll be back in just a few seconds on Newstock 1340, Carol AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Hi, Jeff Mancini here, pro fisherman and inventor of the world. Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Today, the topic is buying a home. We've talked about location, location. We've talked a little bit about layouts. um, But we haven't talked about probably the two most important things. Bathrooms and closets. Yeah. Storage is big, isn't it? Yeah. I'll admit that 
We don't have enough storage in our house. I would, if I had an addition, I think it would just be one big closet. I'm ashamed because I'm a realtor. I built my house and I did not build enough storage. And I did it on purpose. I thought, you know what? I don't want to save a bunch of crap. So if I don't have a place to put it, I won't save it. You were lying to yourself. I was lying to myself. <laughs> I was lying to myself. It's funny how that happens. Yeah. So when you talk to people who are buying, I especially I imagine the young buyer and they don't really understand that you do accumulate. Well, it, I, I say, okay, do you have children? No, we don't. Do you plan to have children? Because isn't it crazy how much stuff comes with kids, especially these days? I and mean, you can they have get rid of it. Yeah, they have fancy little gadgets for everything. I mean, even just the baby stuff. You know, they've got the little toys for them to walk in, and they've got the little things to, ro- you know, rock in. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they've got everything, and that stuff takes space, right? It all takes room. So unless you want to leave it all sitting in the middle of the living room all the time, there should be some ample closet space and storage space. And we've talked about this before, but the more organized you are, the more peace of mind you have, right? So if there's a place to put things, it makes it a lot easier. A lot easier. Yeah. And we think, we all think, oh, I'm not really a person that saves stuff. And the next thing you know, I'm like, why do I have this from 20 years ago? It's crazy. Because it's so important to me, or it was at the time I had it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, Andy, but do you have anything at your house that um, maybe is your kids, is important to your kids? Not important enough for them to take it with them, but important enough for, oh. you, for you to have to hang on to it for them. Sore subject. Yeah. <laughs> so I have um, a really nice storage space that's just chock full of my kids' childhood memories. Now, they have a house and um, more storage space than I do, but their stuff is still at my house. <laughs> Happens to all of us. Yeah, exactly. Eventually. exactly. So that's something really important to think about if you're out there looking at a home. Um, boy, oh boy, I better figure out a way to add storage to my house if I'm going to put it on the market. Because I, I agree, you can't have too much. Yeah, and I feel like what you do have, organize it well so that make the best use of that storage space. So like if you have a nice big area downstairs, even if it's in your mechanical room, if you can get shelving units and put them up or build wooden shelving units and store things in tubs and organize it neatly so that you can show the potential buyer that there is a space for it or as a buyer, you can imagine, okay, good, I can put my, you know, out the kid's clothes that they've outgrown that we're saving for maybe the next kid or we're saving for my sister's kids or or whatever. I mean, people save a lot of stuff. And if they can imagine where it's going to go. But even more important than the stuff we save, I think it's like, again, back to how we live our lifestyle. If somebody has a lot of clothes, I always say, now check out these bedroom closets. Is this big enough for you? I mean, is this going to hold your clothes? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sometimes I hear, <laughs> sometimes I hear, well, I'll use this one and then my husband will have to use the one in the guest bedroom. <laughs> this one's big enough for me, you know, the master closet that's supposed to be for both. But I mean, I just want people to think about those yeah. things because sometimes you don't think about the details when you're looking at the house. You just think about, oh, I love this house. It's beautiful. But we have to kind of visit those things. Is there enough storage? Is this enough bedrooms? Do we have a bedroom for everybody? And then still that guest room that we really want or that room that we were going to put our exercise equipment in. I mean, it's good to have your plan, know what you want, and then not make too many sacrifices. Because if you make sacrifices, you will have regrets. Okay. And if you have regrets, it's going to make it... You're not going to feel very highly about me because you're going to feel like I failed you. I didn't help you find the right house. Okay? It might not be your dream house. Right. That might not be not what it. we're shopping for. But we're always shopping for the right house. We haven't talked about bathrooms. Is it, Are there ever a case where there's too many bathrooms? Well, some people say, you know, it's just the two of us. I don't want to clean four bathrooms. And so that might be appropriate <laughs> for them, right? But um, sometimes I have people say, I absolutely positively want a master bath. I don't have one in my current house, and it's one thing that I really, really wish I had. And then we'll find a house that they really like. 
with no master bath and they're saying, oh, it's okay. We've lived this long without a master bath. And I say, no, 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 <laughs> let's not compromise. Let's keep looking because if a master bath is really important to you and I believe it is, then let's keep looking until we find one with the master bath. So again, there's no magic number that's right for people. I will say for resaleability, um, houses with one bathroom are really tough. And a lot of these older houses have no bathroom on the main. Right. And I think that's tough for people. But I mean, people still buy them. You know, they'll say the location's so great, I'll just deal with it. But it's about prioritizing and what what's the most important to you and then just really stay true to yourself and you know stick to what it is you're looking for and call robin so she can help you stick to I'll your keep truthfulness you, i will <laughs> keep you on task i promise i will absolutely do that okay so if you're thinking about buying a home uh how do they get a hold of you robin and your team Yes, um, we at the Gwaltney Group would love to help you. And you can find out more about us at gwaltneygroup.com. And certainly I'm here to answer any questions you might have or set up an appointment. So feel free to call my cell phone at 507-259-4926. Well, very good. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results. We'll have another program next week. And be sure to check out the blogs at krocnews.com. Mayo Clinic Radio, online.